Hello everybody and welcome back. So in this video we're going to be talking about if, else if, and else. Now these are ways to essentially check a condition before executing a certain block of code. And this is very useful and what a lot of you guys have been asking about in the comments or that have realized be like, okay, well, what if I only want to run this piece of code if this is true? Or what if I want to do this and if this doesn't happen, I do that. Well, this is where we get into if, else, if, and else, which are extremely useful and kind of fundamental skills of the language. So what I've done so far is I've actually just changed this example a little bit. So what we have now is hello, we have a text box, and then we have a button that says click. And the reason I've done this is because what I want to do for this example is has it have it so the user can type something into this text box, click, click, and based on what they type in, we're actually going to change the color of this field. So we could change, you know, if they type in the, the word green, this will change to green when they press the button. If they type in blue, this will change to blue when they press the button. That's what I want to try to do. So let's try to do that. Now, the first thing we need to actually do this is an if statement. So I'm going to run through how an if statement works. Essentially, the syntax for an if statement is you type the word if, which is a keyword. It'll highlight hopefully in this red color for you guys if you're in subline. Then you have these brackets like this. You put some kind of condition inside of these brackets. And if this condition is true, then whatever's inside of these curly braces will run. If it's not true, you're simply going to skip over this entire if statement. So everything that's inside of this block and go to the next line and just ignore it and not even bother doing it. So for instance, if I say if true, well, this will always run because obviously true is always true. But you know, that's a condition I can put that in here. And that means essentially if I did console.log something in here, that would always run. Whereas if I put this to be false like that, and then I was going to console.log, this would never run because, well, this is false. So let's actually give this a go and do something um, a little bit more advanced. So in a real condition inside of here, and then we'll try to do something. So what I'm going to do is actually grab the text that the user typed into my input box and just store that in a variable to start. So I'm going to say var text equals, and in this case, I guess it's document dot get, oops, element, if I could type properly early in the morning for me here, guys, ID, then we will do INP, uh, which is the input box dot value. Okay. So there we go. That's going to grab our text for us. Now what I'm simply going to say is if text equals equals, and I guess we'll say red, we'll change the color of our header tag here to be red. So to do that, I'm going to say document dot get element by ID dot style dot value equals red. And I guess our ID is going to be header like that. Okay. Now the only issue is I need to put this inside of a function so that essentially whenever my button is pressed, we can activate that function and see what the current text value is. So to do that, what I'm going to say is function pressed like this, then I'm going to just close my bracket here and indent all of this. So there we go. So I know I went kind of fast there, but essentially what I've done is create a function called pressed. This function will be clicked or, you know, activated when we press this button here. Then we will get whatever we've typed into the text field, check if it's equal to red. If it's red, we will change the color. Otherwise, we won't do anything. So let's run this now. Let's save and refresh the page. So here, notice when I click, click, nothing's happening. When I type high, you know, nothing's happening. But if I type red, then it changes. Hmm. All right, so I realized I've done style.value rather than style.color. So that would probably be why that wasn't working for a second when I tried it out. So anyways, change that to color. But let me show you again now. So I think I showed if I type something like hello, obviously nothing's going to happen. But if I type red and click click after this has been refreshed, then that will change to red. And that is because we have this style.color equals red. And if text is equal to red, that will happen. Okay, awesome. But what if when I press the button and if they didn't type in red, for example, I want it to automatically change the color to black. So maybe, you know, now if I start typing high, well, it's still the color red because it's not being changed back to the other color. So how do I do that? Well, this is where we can use something called an else. Now an else essentially is happens anytime this if statement doesn't happen. So whenever you have an if else block like this, you know that either the if is going to run or the else is going to run. And it's pretty easy to read it out. You say if text equals red, do this otherwise or else do whatever's inside the else block. And that's as easy as this is. So I'm just going to copy this line and change it so that this makes the color black like this. 
And now let's run this and just show you how this works. And that should hopefully help you. So we have hello. Now let's type, you know, you obviously black, we're not getting anything. Let's type red that changes to red. And then if I type, uh, I don't know, no, we get it back to black. So that is how this works. If it's not red, then it changes the color to black. If it's red, then it changes the color to red. Okay, so what if we want to be able to change the color to red or blue and then anything else goes to black? Well, how would I do that? Well, this is where we use what's called an else if. Now this so far, I hope makes sense. Again, you just have if, if this condition happens, whatever's inside of here, you do this. Otherwise, you do this. Now the else if is kind of an extension on top of this and I'll talk about how it works in a second, but let's get the syntax down first. So essentially the else if is kind of a combination between both the else and the if. Now this is essentially saying if this doesn't happen, so if this if statement doesn't run, we will check if the condition we put here is true. If that's true, we'll do whatever's inside of our brackets here. Otherwise, we'll come down and we'll do what's below here. So this actually means we can have multiple else ifs, which we'll get into in a second. But let's do another example here where we make this say maybe green. And then we will just get the element ID and change it to the color green. So let's tab this in like that and go green. All right. So again, the way this we're operating here is we're going to start by checking if the text is equal to red. If it is, boom, we go red. We don't even bother reading the rest of this. We don't need to do it. Okay. If it's not red, what we'll do is we'll check if it's green. If it's green, we'll change the color to green. Awesome. There we go. We're done. We don't even read the else. If this is not true and this is not true. So both above the else aren't true. Then we'll run the else and we'll change the color to black. And that is pretty much how this works. It's fairly straightforward. So let's refresh. Let's type green. There we go. It goes green. Let's type red. It goes red and let's type blue. And obviously it goes to black. Now, if I wanted to incorporate blue as well, what I could do is simply make another else if like this, um, I think I need to actually do that. Yes, that should work. Let's put another condition here. Say text equals equals equals. Um, that should actually just be three. Let's say blue. And then what we can do is simply copy this and change the color to be blue. And this should work for us. Now, again, this is going to work because we can have as many else ifs as we want. We can do, you know, if else if else if we don't even need to include this else if we don't want to, I can get rid of that. I can have just one else if the combination of these is fine. Just know that if you have an else if or if you have an else, there needs to be the initial if to start that statement. So let's look at this now and let's try this. So let's refresh. If I type blue, we change to blue. If I type red, we go to red. If I type green, we go to green. And if I type something random, nothing happens because that else statement is no longer there. And that is, you know, pretty much how that works. Now, a lot of people get confused with this. Um, try to do some examples. We'll do some more as we go through the different videos. But just remember, you start with your if statement. If whatever happens here happens is true, then this runs. If it doesn't, we'll check all of the else ifs. If any of those are true, we'll execute that and we'll stop looking for the rest of them. Otherwise, we will do any else statement that is at the bottom. And that else statement will happen no matter what, so long as you know the ones above it were false. Now, we can definitely have um, more than one if statement. Like there's different ways to do this. For example, right now I'm doing el else ifs, but what I could actually do is just make all of these ifs. And everything's actually gonna operate the same. And the reason that's gonna happen is because, well, you know, in theory, none of these conditions will be true at the same time, right? The text can never be equal to green, blue, and red at the same time. But the reason we might not want to do this in some instances is, well, like if it's red, what's the point of checking if it's green, right? So in this case, we have three if statements. These are going to happen and they're all going to be checked. Every single one of these if statements, every time we run, this condition will be evaluated and we'll check if this needs to happen. But the thing is, if the statement is red, like if we check the text and it's red, what's the point of even bothering to check these other two if statements? Well, that's why we put them in the else if because we're saying, well, you know, if it's red, there's no chance that this condition will be true. So there's no point in even trying to evaluate it, right? But you know, we can do three ifs like this. I'll show you this works. If I refresh and I go green, that's fine. And the way this is going to work is, you know, we read this if statement, we check it. If it's true, we do it. Then we read this if statement. If it's true, we do it like in theory, we could make these true. Like I can make this statement true. And now let me actually show you how this works. If I type in 
let's say here. So let's have a look at our code. We have red, true, blue, right? So if I type red, notice that we actually change to the color green. Now, the reason that happened is because this is true, right? So this is always going to run. So we check this, even though it actually changes this to red, it gets changed to blue directly after. But now watch what happens if I type blue. Well, blue is actually run. Well, why is that? Because this happens, we change it to green, and then we change it to blue afterwards. So we get to see the blue. So anyways, that has been if else if and else I hope that makes sense. As always, if there's any questions, leave them down below. And with that being said, if you guys enjoyed, leave a like subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys in the next JavaScript tutorial.